Hey guys, it's Adelie here from Aya Pottery. Um, today I wanted to do a throwing video and I wanted to show you how I throw a uh, large platter on a hydro bat, plaster bat. This is a 14 inch hydro bat. Um, and so I'm just gonna try to go through the steps with you guys and, um, and that'll be that. So first, what I always do is if it's dry, I get it a little bit wet because the plaster will absorb all the moisture out of your clay and it will just pop off if you don't have a little bit of moisture uh, on the bottom for it to stick to. So this is about five pounds of stoneware, buff stoneware from Georgie's Pat Horsley clay. Um, so I just pat that on a little bit, mostly in the center and then center like you would normally do. Still doing like the normal coning up. For me, it's a little bit harder, obviously, to center a large amount of clay like it is for most people uh, because it's just heavier. This clay isn't super soft, but it's not super hard either. So I did put on my bag balm this time, today, instead of wearing gloves, because usually for something large, I'm gonna get a lot of tension and pulling, so I don't uh, like to use gloves. I do like a normal coning up, and then I kind of press the sides down uh, so that I can help get it centered. Lock my elbow into my hip here. That's gonna be my anchoring point. My hand, my arm, and then press from the top. Once I feel like I've gotten it pretty centered, you know, when you're making a platter, you do wanna get it as centered as you normally would, but if it's off a little bit, you can always trim it once you get it out a ways. But you don't wanna waste your clay, so um, I try not to do that. So, I usually will get a sponge in my left hand and start pressing down from the center outward in my right. And I like to keep the sponge here on top with me. I use the side of my arm here, my hand, to push down while this is giving me uh, all the moisture and water that I need because uh, it dries out super easy when you're pressing out like this you'll have a lot of drag. And that's all I do is I push from the center and move outward, downward pressure. The other hand is really just there to add moisture and stability to my right hand. And then I even it out, I get it about where I want it. And then I start uh, pushing in a little more in the center pull that clay out for my, my rim that I'm going to make. When I clay it about what the thickness I want for the base, I'll go in and compress. So. We were pushing out this whole time, so when I compress, I like to go inward and bring that clay back in. Not, I mean, not bring the clay back in, but compress the clay in the other direction than what I was doing previously. You want to do it more than you even think you need to do because you really want to compress that bottom. You don't want any cracking. But honestly, this um, plaster bat is really going to help us prevent any cracking because it will release the piece when it's leather hard and there'll be very less, very lo uh, low amount of uh, trimming that is needed. You can make it fairly thin because um, you're not having to cut it off with a wire. So you're getting all that clay at the bottom that you would normally cut off attached still to the piece. So I'll usually just go through 
make sure it feels right to me, add a little bit extra compression, and then I'll start working on my, my rim here. Pull out a little bit further, leaving my thumb over here to support the side, and push inward, and outward, pushing out. And then what I'm gonna do when I have my uh, chunk of clay here, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna slow it down a bit. I'm gonna start lifting up, putting pressure in and pressure in, and then slowly lifting the rim up. slow down out here because the centrifugal force is going to really throw this rim. So I could leave it like this, a kind of just a steep angle here, or I can take my, my curved rib here and create a nice curve. This is also compressing the clay. And I'm just really supporting it over here with my left hand. And then I'll go through and do a little bit more compression here on the inside just to really smooth it out. Go through and dry up any excess moisture. Dry sponge, not dry, but. I like to take the uh, web of my fingers and compress the rim a little bit. It kind of creates a nice soft rim there. Uh, so this is basically the shape that I'm wanting. So I'm just gonna go real slow and put in a spiral here. And a real gentle spiral. I don't like it to be too deep so that um, it just catches the glaze texture but doesn't create a lot of wells for stuff to get stuck in if somebody's gonna use this for food. So with the plaster bat, like I said, you don't have to cut it off, you don't have to do anything. Um, if I could get under there, usually I would uh, trim some of the excess clay off of the bat, but I don't need to. I can leave it just like this, and um, I'll usually uh, leave it out for a few hours and then go ahead and put some light plastic over it so that uh, it can all stay the same moisture and then I leave it for a, you want to dry platters and plates for a long time so I will leave it for a few days before I take that plaster plastic off and see if it's uh, ready to pop off the bat and like I said it will pop off on its own so if it seems like it's taking a really long time to pop off the bat I will take the plastic off and put uh, just like a towel over it and that'll help absorb more moisture also. And then when I uh, pop it off the bat, I trim it on a foam bat where it kind of lays over. Um, just the little edge. I don't usually need to trim the bottom whatsoever unless it's too thick, but usually it's not. And, uh, and there you go. I have a, a, a nice big platter here. It's probably, I would say it's about an inch over on each side, so if it's a 14, it's about 16 inches. So, and that was super easy. So, thanks for watching, guys.